Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. The reason why we call it the Bear Wozniak Adventure is because each of us is on an adventure. My, my creed is that the most radical quest a man can pursue in life <clears throat> is to abandon himself to the wild adventure of God's will. <clears throat> and so today we're going to talk with our guest, Dr. John Sadosanti, uh, about <clears throat> really his, his adventure in life. And you know, a lot of the word adventure can mean basically turning adversity into uh, adventure by pursuing God's will. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. <clears throat> we're talking about how adventure, Louis, Louis L'Amour, one of my favorite writers, he's a Western author. In my new book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, has a lot of his quotes in it. He says that adventure is just another way of saying things really went bad. <laughs> You know, and what it took to overcome that adversity. I know here in Hawaii, when the surf is big, we paddle out, and sometimes it's challenging, but normally here in Hawaii, we surf reef breaks, and they may be a quarter of a mile, half a mile, or even a mile out. But there's usually deep channels between the reefs, so I can paddle out through these channels and not have to paddle battle to get through the waves. I can be 10 feet from a 30 foot face you know breaking on my to the right of me and i'm just i'm not even 10 feet just a few feet but it doesn't doesn't kill me because i'm uh in a deep channel but i've surfed in places uh, most places when you paddle out even in moderately big surf you have to paddle battle you paddle and you paddle and you paddle and you paddle and you're going against wave after wave after wave you're duck diving through it and you're oftentimes getting swept uh, down the coast and when you finally make it out, you're not even sure where you are. But you, you just keep the course, keep the course, and uh, eventually you make it out. Well, um, I just want to encourage everybody there. Today we're going to visit with Dr. John Sadosanti, who himself has helped many people with medical issues. He's an oral surgeon, but has faced them himself. And not just the medical issues, but any area of your life. Uh, I know everyone I'm talking to right now is facing a challenge. And I've learned as a radio interviewer, I become a radio interviewer wherever I am. I'm, if I'm having coffee here in Hawaii and there's people kind of sit at the same table here at the little coffee shop we go, and I'll ask him questions. And the most meek and mild person there, you wouldn't believe the adversity that, that they've had to face and conquer in their lives. Everybody has a story. And so we want to talk about that. We have our, with us as our guest today, Dr. John Sadasanti. He's from the San Diego. I met him through the Legatus speaking down there. And we, his book is Mortal, Mortal Adhesions, kind of a cool, a cool uh, a title. But Dr. John Sadosanti is world-renowned in his, in his efforts at learning, uh, developing new methods of bone growth, which is very important with uh, dental surgery. And, um, but has also uh, been on this, went on this journey to, uh, to from, from not really believing or having a relationship with God, but through Curcio, and hiking the Santiago de Compostalo, and even facing prostate cancer in his experience at Lourdes. So, Dr. John Sadosante, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Thank you, Bear. It's a so, pleasure. So good to be with you. I see in your background there you got Mother Angelica. I love that picture on that book cover. Yes. I love that because I remember when I first went to Alabama, I was really on a discovery phase of, of, of where the Lord was leading me. And I walked into that, to their studio, and I saw that big picture, full color picture of that exact picture. And doesn't she have that smile on her, on her face like, I know something you don't know, and God's up to something, and get ready for the ride of your life. That's what it looked like to me. <laughs> you probably don't know this, because very few, many, very few people do, but I'm actually related to Mother Angelica through marriage. No kidding. My daughter-in-law, who is in the book about the baby being born, mm. Her stepmom is a lady by the name of Barbara Houghton, who is Mother Angelica's first cousin. No kidding. Oh, so that's why you get this halo. You, it's kind of the you get the the kind of 
arches over into into you. Well, we want to get we want to get get into your story because we only have this forty five minutes together, and I want to get right into it. Uh, can you during this segment we got about six minutes here, just kind of develop the background of who you were, your journey, uh, you know, the intellectual pursuit that you had, and uh, and and your professional life as we develop as we go into scene, kind of where eventually. Do you kind of had there is that is that all there is kind of experience is there must be something more so okay my dad was born in italy actually in sicily he came over in a very poor family but he was able to go to college and get a degree in civil engineering but he faced a lot of prejudice anti-italian prejudice and he would preach to me and say things like john what you need in this country is to get college degrees and not just one degree, become a doctor. If you become a doctor, you'll be respected and you'll make a lot of money. So I followed that and I took it beyond what he asked for and got graduate degrees and specialty training, et cetera, and opened up a, a practice in San Diego. First, uh, we did some training in LA uh, the book talks about movie stars that interface with me, et cetera, even down here in San Diego. And I made a lot of money, and Dad's words were always in my mind, even though I was a cradle Catholic. Uh, when I went off to college, an Ivy League institution, which was very secular, I stopped going to church, didn't think much about God, we got a lot of successes when I graduated. and. 1983 bought a house overlooking the Pacific Ocean in La Jolla, California, which is almost like the Beverly Hills of San Diego. Well, the La Jolla, the can't, La Jolla can't be compared to anything. It's just so <laughs> it beautiful, so beautiful, and you, the seagulls there, and then, and then early in the morning you you're getting your cup of coffee, walking along there, and you hear these seals uh, out on the ocean so, echoing along the cliffs. And just the fragrance of the Pacific Ocean. Uh, my yeah, wife and I. My it's wife an and I. My wife and I have spent some time there. You know, beautiful, beautiful La Jolla. Yeah. So the house was a big house. Uh, it overlooked Scripps Pier. I could see the white water hit the sand. I could hear the waves roaring in the into the house. I bought a, almost a stretch Mercedes, a black Mercedes, brand new S class, and. Everything was perfect. I, I love that. I love he that was, chapter of your book where it says that that song. Oh Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? Mm. Yeah, you had you had great success in your career, and the financial trappings that came along with that, and that's a, that's good. There's nothing wrong with that, but if that's your pursuit in life, as opposed to a byproduct of of the pursuit of God's will, uh, then that that's just a bunch of emptiness eventually. And I found that out. I did. I, what, what I ended up doing was building an empire. I mean, for a private practice, I had several offices, multiple surgeons, big staff. There were 52 of us. Wow, John. And, wow. And I was the head person. But the stress got to me. I started getting severe back problems, neck problems, headaches, insomnia, anxiety, stress. And I, and I bet you became a bit of a headache to people, too. You know, as, sure as, you know what I mean? As, as my you, wife will tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, it's so interesting because as a CPA, you know, I've speak with at a lot of the Legatus groups, which is how we met. The, I ask people, when is, when is, you know, bigger is not always better, you know, and when is enough enough? And, you know, not, not, that it, not that it isn't great to build major enterprises, but some people just kind of get in that path and it's not necessarily God's will or the best for them or their family to just get bigger and bigger and bigger and, and, Eventually, I'll ask them, uh, what's more important to you, this, this or your marriage, you know? And not say that you can't be very successful in business, but it has to be all done in a balanced way, and it needs to be, uh, uh, your focus needs to be Jesus Christ so that it's all, that you're following his will. So I know what you mean. that was the problem. I've seen that, yeah. That was the problem. Jesus Christ wasn't part of my life. I thought, I think I thought I was my own God. I thought I could figure everything out myself until I realized I couldn't. And I remember the evening so well. I was in my Mercedes Benz with the uh, rooftop open, and I the one the, the one the Lord bought, stuff. God bought for you. <laughs> the oh Lord, won't you buy? Yeah, so you had but the roof the, open, and you're looking up at the stars, the stars and nature. And I looked up there, and I said, actually said the words, "God, if you are up there," because I didn't know if He was, if He existed. 
all I want is inner peace. Please help me. And it was turning to God that started changing things. It was amazing. It started with the very next day. I, you know, I can't go into details of all the little things that happened, but it was unbelievable. In the beginning, I thought it was all coincidence. But as things went on, he put people that were unbelievable in my pathway and things. Now we're taking. We're talking with Dr. John. We're talking with Dr. John Sadosanti, and we'll be right back after this break. But yeah, it strikes me that he put Spitzer in your path. You know, Dr. Robert Spitzer, as an intellect yourself. Oh, he, he definitely did. Yeah, and and and, and his great books, and, and and I think one of the things he talks about is man's upward yearning. You know, and and that that looking up, the word desire means to look up at the stars. I probably stole that from Spitzer or one of the early church fathers. I don't know, but but you had that moment when all of a sudden you saw there was something beyond yourself up there, and you made that cry. And guess what, everybody, God hears hears those kind of prayers, and 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 Jesus is the great hound of heaven, and He will pursue you. Doctor John Sadosanti will be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue through Bears Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion. Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, the, about two years ago, I was driving with my wife uh, from Waikiki. We live here in Waikiki Beach, going along Diamond Head. And this song came on the radio. And if you know my wife, she's a cowgirl. She, she, she was raised riding horses. She didn't have anything but cowboy boots to wear until she had to become a cheerleader in high school. So she's a real cowgirl. And there was a song being sung, and she said, you're going to love this song. And she turned it up, and it was Paula Cole, and she was singing, I can't say the words exactly, but she was singing something like, you make the money, I'll raise the kids. Uh, and then she was, it was, she was bemoaning, and she said, she was singing, where is my John Wayne? Where have all the cowboys gone? In my new book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, is based on that. And I, we hear this wherever we go, when Cindy and I travel, if I'm speaking like at a radio, uh, a radio um, gala or a Legatus group or wherever we speak where there's mixed people because I speak a lot just to men. If we're, we're, there, we're speaking to a mixed group, 
the women will get to us before we get in the building, and they'll pretty, pretty much put us at a full stop, and they'll just say, we need for you to tell our men to stop apologizing for being men. We need for you to tell them we want the men to be men. We need, we need men to be manly again. And so, like I was invited to speak at the Tampa conference this February, which I'm looking forward to, the men's big men's conference there, and they were going to call it Catholic masculinity, and I go, if you do, I'm not going to come. Just call it Catholic manliness. Just call it manliness. The word for man in Latin is the word ver. It's the root word for the word virtue. We need manliness again today. Again, so this book, Twelve Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Women, you need to read it. Young women need to read it so they know what the standard of a man really is. Fathers need to read it, and and uh, men's groups need to use it. And fathers need to read this to their sons. And if you're a, if you're a single mom, you need to read this to your sons. Our guest today is is could have, our, our our the book could have been written about John Sato Santi, Doctor John Sato Santi, oral surgeon from San Diego. Uh, his book, Mortal Adhesions, and we're ta- we're really t- kind of tracking the, the the story of his life. So now you're in, you have this Desiree Data sort of moment. I shouldn't say it that way, but the word desire. You're looking up, and you say, God, if you if you God, if you're you're there, you know, show yourself to me. Uh, what happened? The very next day, I went to a bookstore and I went to the rack for audio tapes because I was going to be going to a business meeting with my partner. I wasn't getting along with my partner. It was very stressful. I hated the thought of the meeting. And I see this tape and it was called Love is Letting Go of Fear. And I ended up listening to it, loved the principles that it taught me about, it said 12 steps to happiness and happiness is what everybody wants. And I go to the meeting and I had my partner re- listen to the tape before he went to and we had the best meeting and then he gives me a gift a week later he'd never given me one I opened up the book and it said the publisher was the foundation for inner peace and it was that the same words that I had just used yeah <laughs> no you and knew God was at work the actual author who, who I wanted to meet so badly put in front of me in an airport no kidding and uh, you have to you have to re- read the chapters because there's so much in there but there was an amazing series of events that made me realize for sure God existed but then you know it's a big stretch to to become a devout Catholic from from just saying God exists and mm. I, I think that that uh, I went through a period of time of at least 10 years of searching, tried New Age, tried Evangelical Protestantism, tried everything. But my wife was very Catholic, and my mom prayed to St. Jude every day because I was a hopeless case. And my wife got me to go to a Bible study, a weekly Bible study that went on forever. Was it a non-denominational Bible study or a Catholic Bible study? Yeah, it was. Yeah, there were mostly Catholics and some Protestants Mm -hmm. there, but it was more or less non-denominational. And if and anyway, that was first. But the the big thing was the Curcio weekend, and you talk about manliness. I want to hear about you know my dad. I never made a Curcio, but my dad became very involved because we came up through the Catholic charismatic, kind of the Wild West days of those. But he went through Curcio and made a major impact on his life. Tell me about Curcio. Oh, it's incredible. I mean, here you go up in the mountain, you have no idea. We have, a, we have a mountain in San Diego, and that's where it's held at a camp up there in the woods. You go up there, you have no idea who you're going to meet or what they're going to teach you and all this stuff. And you go up there and you see people that maybe you know around town that are like top executives, people that are really successful athletes, et cetera. And they're really... I'll use your term, and it's manly men, guys. Yeah, men only, right? At, at the, there's the men go yeah, to different women than the women. The, yeah, the wives of the women go the following week. So they were manly. And these guys start talking about God, and they talk start talking about Christ. And like one guy who was extremely well known because of his wealth, started talking about his drug addiction and how he hit bottom, and it was about thinking suicide, and how God came into his life probably through Crucio, and he turned it around, and now he's an incredible person. And people were sharing, and and they couldn't help me enough. And I, I loved it. Anyway, it started changing my life. So it was grit, and, then, and it was grit and grace. You saw real yes. men that taught that that lived a life of uh, in the Holy Spirit, in relationship sure with did. Jesus. Yeah, they, they really did. 
And and one of the men, the actual, he's called the rector, was a big six foot four, athletic, handsome, healthy guy, who a few years later developed cancer and became a big part of my story. Because what happened was, this two years out, I would I would keep touch with some of the people, and I formed well I didn't form it they formed a group the Crescio guys to meet every Friday morning in a restaurant and talk. We that, talked that's about the, that's the big thing about Crescio is when you're done you're not done you go right into no, a brother you go right into a brotherhood. You do. Oh, it's oh, the called man. the fourth day. I've yeah. been doing it for twenty years. I've been meeting with the same men. Well, it must I be mean, a good restaurant. Know. Must be a good restaurant. Well, we, we've changed three restaurants, so it's it's the men, not the restaurants. Hey, I know I'm messing uh-huh. with you, but yeah, absolutely. No, I, I know. Food and fellowship anyway, go guy, well. <laughs> so the rector, the rector got cancer. I heard that, and he was in my breakfast group. And then what happened was, one of the guys I used to see every few months and have lunch with, told me he could have lunch with me any day because his wife was going to Spain, and I thought. She's go- who, who's she going with? All, all by herself. She's going to walk across Spain on the Camino de Santiago, which is a 500-mile pilgrimage route from France all the way to Santiago de Compostela in northwest Spain. So you, so you, can't, you can't take an Uber ride then to do it. you got to actually walk it. No, no. But, but, but no, I want I wanna, I, I wanna to pause you for a second. Yeah. Did you have a conversion experience? Uh, did you have a deepening in your uh, ex- a personal con- um experience with Jesus on, on that retreat the Crisio or was it still in progress no I had a, I had a, I had the most profound spiritual experience of my life tell us about that, that. let's not uh, on what uh, at, at the Crisio or on the Camino on the Camino too. okay yes all right let's the, okay I, let's forward yeah. to that then I apologize go ahead yeah no it was on the Camino um, what happened was my son called me. I have three sons. Only one was married. The other two, I'm not sure they'll ever get married. But but Mark called me and he said, Dad, I have some bad news. His wife had been pregnant twice and she miscarried both times. Mm-hmm. And he said, we just went to the doctor. This is right after the second miscarriage. And he said, we'll probably never be able to have children. And you know what it's like to have a kid, right? <laughs> I mean, I've heard you talk about it. And I couldn't believe I couldn't be a grandfather. So I'm a type A personality. When my buddy tells me about the Camino de Santiago and his wife's gonna walk across it, I go on Amazon, which is relatively new, but 20 years ago, and I buy five books on the Camino de Santiago, one's an encyclopedia, and I find out there's a saint who's known for helping pregnant women deliver or have a healthy, or have a baby. Queen Isabella of Spain in the 1470s actually went to the tomb on the Camino, the tomb of San Juan de Ortega, and prayed there for a baby. She needed a son to be the heir of the throne. She had a daughter seven years earlier and had miscarried, just like my daughter-in-law. And she prayed, and and nine months later, she had a son. And I said, well, it worked for her. I might as well try. So that's in the back of my mind when I go to my Curcio breakfast, and there's this guy standing, sitting in front of me, Mike, and he's bald from chemotherapy and weak and sad. And the Holy Spirit talked to me and said, Mike, have you ever heard of the Camino de Santiago? He said, yeah, that pilgrimage route across Spain. I said, would you do it with me? He says, you're crazy. I can't walk around the block. And the guy next to me, who's an ex-fighter pilot in Vietnam, uh, you know, really macho type guy, he went ahead and uh, said, I'll do it. So we talked Mike into it. So four so of us, the- four of us said, so my, my just, just to put this uh, okay, so we got to take a break. We're at we're at a, we're at a hard break here. Uh, before we get in deeper into that story, we're talking with Dr. John Sato Santi, his book Mortal Adhesions. We'll talk more about the about his walk along the Camino. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. This is Daryl the Boone Markham with another episode of Country of Loner. Once upon a time, there was a cowpoke named Loner. Loner wanted to be a lawman, wrangled his way to get deputized as a posse member. Strange bird he was, criticized the posse regular like saying because the fellow posse member offended him and the sheriff disappointed him that he wasn't going to ride with the posse no more, nor take direction from the undersheriff. 
he chortled. I can hunt down bad guys on my own. I don't need no gulderin' posse in spite of what it says in that old tattered posse manual. Well, Loner was eventually bushwhacked and killed by Scarface Joe. That's what happens when you ride alone facing evil. Loners like folks who say they don't need the church to be a Christian, in spite of what the Lord Marshal says and in spite of what the Lord's Manual says. Fact is, two-thirds of the Lord's Manual, the New Testament, lacks context apart from Christians participating as a member of a local church. It was that tough old sodbuster, the Apostle Paul, who wrote to the Corinthians that a Christian saying, can't say in truth he doesn't need the church said it's like an eye saying it doesn't need the hand. Sure, there's going to be some daggum hard things to follow in the manual. The sheriff can be mystifying at times, and yes, there's always a posse member that will offend us. Truth is, you'll not be effective in defeating evil apart from the posse and reading the manual. You'll get taken out by someone far wilier than Scarface Joe. So, ride with the posse. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos, Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We want to invite you mama bears out there to go to deepadventure.com and join the mama bears. Uh, you get access to... Well, if you join the man cave to the men, there's the man cave and the school of manliness at the same site. But you get access to two and a half years of videos uh, as I go all step by step through the catechism while I'm down at the beach every morning. And then we uh, we have you have access to all 33 episodes of Long Ride Home, our motorcycle TV show. And um, and you uh, have access the women have access to a one year course on the virtues and the men have access to a two and a half year school of manliness. So we invite you to go to deepadventure.com. Go to our web store there and <clears throat> check out everything. But it's a great, if you want to know anything about our ministry, if you go there, you'll find out. So deepadventure.com. We have with us today Dr. John Sato Sante, and we're talking story with him about his journey towards uh, the, the grit and the reality of Jesus Christ. So now, John, you're, you're with your men's group. You still, you're still on your journey towards, towards faith, but you're, but you're and, 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 and having that personal experience of the Lord at this point right yeah what, what we did was uh, all of us were working so we couldn't take six weeks off so i found out you can still get your compostela which is the official certificate you get in santico to compostela when you've completed the trip uh, if you bicycle it so we went with a bicycle company oh that's the way to do it yeah I've... and that's the way to do it yeah and i didn't want to make it too easy so i made a bargain with the lord i didn't know if the lord was listening to me or not but I said, dear Lord, I said, a lot of the guys are going to ride in the van when we hit the steep hills. And I said, I'm not going to get in that van. I will suffer as much as I, I have to to do this for you. And I hope that 
you know, that Mark and Martha will be able to have a baby, baby. And I prayed oh, praise to God. the Lord to have a baby. You know, I'm going to say something. And when I, when I, when I, I pedaled my bicycle from San Diego to Jacksonville, Florida, and mm. I, did, I did that as a prayer. And I remember, yeah, by the way, I know how steep those mountains in San Diego are because that was the hardest part of my whole thing. But I, I, that, whole, that whole 27 days was a prayer. That way, and I, I dedicated that time to a prayer. And so I understand this, this, this journey and that pilgrimage being a prayer, this spe- very specific prayer. And you weren't going to let that difficult terrain stop you. You were going to do it. No. And in fact, the morning we were going to go into the town of San Juan de Ortega, where the tomb was and the saint for mm. infertile women, I had a terrible bike accident. I almost got killed by a Mack truck. Uh, he came between two buildings around a curve, almost wiped me out. I had to hit the building, hit, hit the ground. I'm laying on the ground. His rear wheel goes within 12 inches of my ear, and my legs are bleeding and everything else. But <laughs> I hobble into, I, I, I rode the rest of the way that day and come into the town in the tomb. And Mike, because he had cancer, had rushed down to the church. The rest of us were starving and we're eating our sandwiches. And he comes back and he says, John, drop your sandwich. Go down to that church and go down in the tomb. He said, you're not going to believe what's there. He said, I've, I've been the Lord's. He says, that's a holy place. But I've never felt the presence of God as I have in the tomb of San Juan de Ortega. He didn't even know. He didn't know much about the same. So I go down there and he was right. I walk into that tomb and all of a sudden, I mean, on my bloody knees, I hit the ground. <laughs> I can't believe I did that. And I start praying. And there's a tomb down there. I'm, going, I'm on an upper level of a two-level tomb, and I'm looking down at the casket. And across from the casket is a dark wood cross. And I'm looking at the cross, and I'm praying for a baby. And all of a sudden, Barry, you're not going to believe this. I see a small blazing cross superimposed on the dark, big wood cross. I'm looking at it, and I'm, I'm a scientist. I've hey, written multiple that, papers. Yeah, you're a scientist. It, this is... You know, this isn't real. This is it couldn't be real. Yeah, right. But, you know, I can't be hallucinating, and I haven't been drinking. And all of a sudden, that cross divided. You know, it became three crosses. The one cross divided, and it's like an egg dividing, except that the mother cell doesn't didn't disappear. The mother cross stayed there. And I'm looking at three crosses. The outer crosses divide. Now I'm looking at five blazing crosses. They divide, and I'm looking at seven blazing crosses, and they stop dividing. I didn't know at that point in time that seven is a very holy number. It's in the right. Bible, many right. times. The number and, of wholeness. And for at least, at least fifteen minutes, I stood there, but I couldn't believe. I mean, I prayed there on my knees, but I couldn't believe what I was seeing. So I said, "These Spaniards are incredible. They've got a <laughs> light show going on. They're projecting crosses on the far wall, and there's a movie projector behind my head, and it's shining through a hole in the wall." So I turned around, and it's a solid wall. And I said, well, my, re- my glasses are reflecting the vote of candles down below and turning them into crosses. So I reached for my glasses and they're my back cycling box. They're not even jersey. on. Yeah. They're not even on. And then I ran out of, I, I knew then it was a Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit experience. And what a I miracle. Went, it, so, was an, it was a total miracle. Now, the end of the story quickly is, is that Martha got pregnant within two weeks of my returning home. Gave mm. birth to a baby boy nine months later, who is now a senior at Yale University. Well, praise God! You know, I tell you, uh, God. God cares. God, God cares, and you know He listens a lot to the prayers of uh, grandmothers and grandfathers. You know, even though at that time this child wasn't born, you had a grand, you had this grandchild in eternity. God knew. I l- I left that tomb knowing Martha would have a baby. They don't. They're not sure they believe me, but uh, because their face isn't quite where I'd like it to be at this point of their lives. But I knew it. I I, I felt God. God it spoke wasn't. To me it wasn't. Message. It wasn't white knuckle. It wasn't. I'm going to believe this. It was like you just knew. I know. Yeah. Certainty. Yeah. Way down in your knower. Not not sci- not science. It's so funny how science denies. Well, I don't want to get off off on this, but the, the the scientific evidence behind the shroud, as I know you love Father Robert Spitzer oh, and all the work he's the done, shroud. and the Eucharistic miracles. Uh, but uh, you, okay, there it is. It's right there, and they'll and, and they'll deny it. But so now, so now this this is a this must have propelled you on on 
your own personal journey too. So I, I want to get to the, keep going, I want to get to the part about the prostate cancer and Lourdes and all of that. So th- that that's the sneak preview of what's coming next. But but don't skip anything important, but go ahead and tell me now. So you, you, you okay. let them know there's a baby on its way. Did you tell them? I told them. And then after the baby was born, I told them basically after the baby was born and then Martha mm-hmm. laughed and she said, oh, everybody's trying to take credit for, for, for my baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the Bible so, says that before. No, they know. They know. No, they know me. That people will say to me. Well, I mean, when people just first meet me, they'll say, "Well, is he, he really is this truthful or not?" Well, you have to look at my record. I mean, I practiced surgery in the same town for forty-five years, and and you know, I didn't jump around from time to time. I've never been sued. Thank heavens. Thank God. And and I'm a scientist. I publish papers and scientific yes, literature. Yes. I've been president of multiple societies, including Legatus, but also at the national level in healthcare. So I, I'm known as a person who tells the truth. Well, you know I what? Couldn't, I couldn't look at you and tell you, a lie. But yeah, that's so, so significant a statement. Be, but to be known as a man of your word, that is so, so significant. You're, but you're, you're, uh, you're, um, you're, uh, Science and truth and God, people keep thinking science and religion are in some sort of conflict, which to me is ridiculous. Uh, but, but you know, God made a world that if he wanted to, he could intervene. And he does that. He did that at the incarnation. He does that with miracles. I want to talk about your prostate cancer because you may not know, but I, I, maybe you do know I've also uh, been through that battle. So let, let's move on from there then. Uh, don't, don't skip anything, but... Uh, Let's move on toward, towards that because we have can, only one can, more. Uh, we have one more segment. That's why. So, you, you, get it, get you know, the toughest sin to get rid of because the title of my book basically says a surgeon battles the seven deadly sins to find faith, yes. happiness, and inner peace. Okay. So, um, the, the toughest sin to get rid of is your ego, and I got. I really started riding a road bike. I bought a lightweight titanium road bike. I love it. I mean, you and I'd go up and down mountains. A pedaling, I did, a, pe- I did a, pe- a pedaling bike, a pedaling bike, not a motorcycle. I hate okay. batteries. Yeah, okay. I hate, oh, well, okay. cars maybe, but yeah. but I hate batteries on bikes. I would train going up and down, up and down mountains, and so I did a ride called the Death Ride in California, 129 miles and 16,000 vertical feet of climbing in one day. Yeah, that that's that. that's almost. I I I mean, you went, and is this an off road? No, it's, this is an off-road. This is the skinny tires on on road on paved road, uh, but nine thousand feet elevation, so thin air. Are, are you are you going straight up, or are you having feet. to wind, are you having to wind yourself back did, and forth? I did five five peaks. We climbed five peaks, so five peaks averaging three thousand feet to climb. Okay, all, so in, all in one day. So that gives you some so street I cred. Tra- we, but we got to take a break know, here. I, I, I guess that gives yeah. you a little bit of street cred then, uh, as being uh, the manliest guy in the room here right now. But no, so John, John Sato Santi, uh, the author of the book Mortal, Mortal Adhesions, we'll talk more about, your, about that ride, and then we're going to talk, talk about this, the ride of your life, uh, you know, as God leads you through your adventure. This is the Bear Wozniak adventure. We'll be right back. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. 
When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak Adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Bear and Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. still listening i thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station well you asked for it here is more of the bear wozniak adventure aloha welcome back to the bear wozniak adventure go to the youtube channel and subscribe to uh bear wozniak uh the bear wozniak youtube channel the bear wozniak deep adventure youtube channel or better yet go to our website deepadventure.com and there's up there it says be uh, subscribe Subs if you push that button you'll start getting these radio shows sent to you every saturday morning the youtube version of it and uh and uh you'll be able to kind of preview you get to see see our handsome guests instead of just uh and beautiful guests instead of just listen and one of our, our guests today is john Sadosanti. So what? So you so you decide you're going to do this. What is it called again? The death ride. You can oh, look that up on the internet. No, I the remember. I, I I used to do this mountain bike ride, seven miles down to the beach and seven miles back up, and people used to when that last then the last part was the hardest coming back up, and they say that's going to kill you. I go no, that's going to keep me alive. Right. So it wasn't the death ride. It's the ride for life. Really, when you when you face that type of when you take on a physical challenge like that, but tell us about that, and then I want to get I want to get into the story about your your uh, lords and your prostate cancer. We only well, got my PSA minutes. started rising when I'm riding the bike. You know, oh. I'm just too busy to work about it. PSA is is a test you take that shows if you maybe uh, have a prostate challenge. Yeah, exactly. And I just figured it was uh, the the bicycle seat was pounding my prostate, and it was just a you know a, a overgrown prostate from being traumatized and. It was just going up a little bit at a time, and and I start I, th I start reading reading the literature and thinking, oh well, uh, that's, you know, I start taking over the counter type, holistic stuff. I'm I'm a terrible patient myself. I like being in being in the white jacket, and finally I find out I've got uh, prostate cancer cancer that has spread outside of the gland. Aggressive was the way the the biopsy report came back. And again, even though I was strong in my Catholic faith at that point in time, I, I had to turn to the Lord. I started going to daily mass and then followed daily mass. I went to Eucharistic adoration. And then I turned to Padre Pio. It was one of the great things about Catholicism is we have so many things to turn to. Well, not only Jesus Christ, but we can talk to the saints or pray to the saints, etc. And I prayed to Padre Pio and I got this message in a sense, a message on idea to go to Lourdes, France. So I went to Lourdes, France, and it was the most amazing spot. Yeah, uh, so you have to read yeah. the book. Yeah, oh yeah, well, I've, 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 I've highlighted a few spots, but I gotta go, really go through it. And everyone should get the book, Mortal Adhesions, Dr. John Sadosante. Okay, so, you went to Lourdes? Yeah, so, so I went to Lourdes, and uh, oh, things happened there. God put people in front of me. There was a, nor a Northern Ireland, nor Northern Ireland, cancer group that goes almost every year and was headed by this wonderful priest and I'm waiting in line to go into the baths and he sits down next to me. Had a wonderful experience and I ended, ended up going to healing masses that night and he would pray over me and things and, and when I went into the baths I felt the most unbelievable peace of my entire life. When I left for Lourdes I was anxious, my staff in the office knew I was anxious when I came back, I'm singing Marian hymns, and it's just, I'm so peaceful. And this woman that had worked for me for many years was a Lutheran. She said, I, whatever you have, I want. I said, let Debbie, let's go to lunch. Well, you know, you see, that, 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 but what you just said is so significant. You don't have to be a theologian to bring someone to the Lord. You just, the, Jesus said, you'll be my witnesses. And your countenance was a great witness. And so now you're just going to go and tell her what Jesus did for you. I did. The, the night before our lunch, I sat down and wrote 17 reasons she should be a Catholic. And I went bang, 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 bang. And, and, and that's all it took. It took an hour and a half. 
and I got I brought her to RCIA. I became her sponsor. She became a devout Catholic. Unbelievable. And, uh, and, and, and now that I've written the book, people write me emails and they say, I'm going to return to the Catholic Church after reading your book. I've been away for 30 years, 40 years. I hadn't gone to confession in 40 years. So uh, so it's been really rewarding to me. Well, how is uh, your tell me tell, tell me about you, 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 you experience you went into the baths and what do they do? Do they 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 someone helps you get in and you do they yeah. pray for you at that moment or what happens? They do. They have you pray. There's a statue and you pray, you pray the Lord and, and, and Mary, Mary, and, and uh, then they dunk you back. I don't, since COVID, things have changed. So I don't know if they still dunk you, but they dunk me underwater, pretty cold water. And people said, when you get out of the bath, you're going to dry off instantaneously. Well, that, and that water and, is a miraculous, that's a miraculous spring that just opened up when Mary appeared right. there. Oh, yeah, the story so, of Bernadette yeah, Sula I've, I've, I, I've been there to Lourdes. Um, I was, uh, it was kind of like maybe the beginning point of my returning to the Catholic Church. I just went by myself, didn't, you know, but I want to, I don't want to, did you have, did you, did you receive a, a, a healing or tell me about that? Uh, well, for, for, first of all, <clears throat> I had a spiritual healing right away because the peace just came, came. So that was good. I, and I came back and I was very clear thick thinking. I decided to go ahead because I had been on hormone treatment. When your prostate cancer is really bad, the first thing you do is whack it with hormone treatment. That produces your PSA down to almost zero. So to, to go ahead and not have treatment, I'd have to wait three or four or five months, see if the PSA came back up type of thing. So I went ahead and had radiation treatment, but I, I breezed through it. Which I, 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 I had radiation treatment. I didn't breeze through it. It was not okay. I had I had <laughs> proton therapy, which is yes. different radiation. Yes, I know. I'm and fifteen familiar. years later, obviously, I'm doing okay. But that that cancer at the point that it was, that was kind of like that's it. I mean, it it, it had gone it had gotten past your. Pro Mine was very it was as as extreme as it could get, except for not it hadn't gone outside the prostate, and so and so. Um, Tell it. Tell us now. Uh, so you you went you were prayed with. You went back and still continued the treatment. You did the common sense thing, right? You didn't just throw the... Yeah, I thought it was a common sense thing. I, yes, you know, I think it makes total sense. If you want to be one of the 70 miraculous cures, you can't have any treatment at all at Lourdes. And there's seven to 10,000 people that swear they have been cured at Lourdes, but the Lourdes Medical Bureau has to have all your records, and you can have no treatment I love whatsoever. That. I love that about the Catholic difficult. Church. Yeah. I love it, too. So, so, you, so, 70, you, so you would say that you were... Have been approved. I'm interrupting you. I apologize, Doctor. So, so you would say that you experienced the the, the inner peace and you and a, and, a, and a physical healing, too. But you continued along the the protocol, uh, and now oh, you've been 15 years now. And what's your PSA level now? Oh, I, you know, I still have a prostate. It's zero, zero point one two. Yeah. So that means probably zero. They it's, just put the zero. one two there because they don't want to. They want exactly. And, I didn't and, have surgery, so. It can't be zero, but yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I couldn't be happy. Well, as my, is, my faith journey continued because I found a spiritual advisor, uh -huh. and I got joined the goddess. Which what do you is mean a, by a spiritual advisor? Uh, we meet once a month, typically. And how how and is this person we, qualified to be your spiritual advisor? Oh, it's, it's a priest, a Catholic priest, and he has many people that he's giving spiritual advice to. But he asks, what's going on in your life? And he's a guide. And sometimes some very difficult decisions have to be made. And he closes his eyes. I swear he speaks to God or Jesus. And he tells me what he thinks. So, and sometimes I follow it, sometimes I don't. But does, he Padre Pio you every, does he Padre Pio you every now and then get in your face or anything? I I, uh, <laughs> I I constantly read Padre Pio books. So I, think I have his teaching. right on my desk right now. I have a little short. Uh, yeah, I'm looking around yeah. for my little book too. So so he's one of my favorites. I, I think we are so blessed. I think that if you ask the question, Bear, you know, are there, why should somebody read your book? I think there's three reasons. If person out there is having any kind of anxiety at all, unhappy with their life, um, and wants to know, does God exist? Honestly, think if you read my book in its entirety, you'll say at the very end, I think John makes a really good case that God does exist. And is the Catholic Church right for you? It bailed me out in so many ways once I finally turned to it. And, um, you know, so anybody that's got anxiety, 
doesn't feel comfortable. A great book to read is Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. And he talks about... Oh, you're one of those kind of readers. Back. You're one of those kind of readers. Okay. <laughs> I tried to read. He talks about the existential vacuum. In other words, we get all these things. We get the big car. We get the big house. We get you know everything we think is perfect. But it isn't perfect because there's a void there. As Augustine said, a hole in your heart. And it needs to be filled. Mm. And when you have the existential vacuum, nature abhors a vacuum and wants to fill it. What do they? Have, what does it fill it with? Your your addictions and the or your seven deadly Which, sins. And addictions can be to houses. It doesn't have to be to drugs. But we obviously have a drug problem in this country well, today. I got We got to we got to close out, John. We're, we're yeah. right at the end of the, We're right right here in the, the end of the show. But you're right. You know, it's it's like the uh, the that that chasm is infinitely large because it's designed to to be filled to be to be the the temple of god himself so it's as large of all eternity and large as all infinity and if you're filling it one of the church fathers talked about it's like a man walking down the street and eating air there's no substance you know if you fill it with anything other than god so if you're feeling that that emptiness now, believe me, the emptiness is 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 infinite, and only God, only only God can fill that. And if you want to know more about that, go to Do Dr. John Satisantis. There's certain people out there that are just going to re respond to this book like no other book, and so I really recommend you read it. It's a good, it's an easy read. It's a good read. It, it it's a ta it's a page turner. And I had to, I didn't get to go, as, I didn't get to read every single line of this book because of my. Uh, own uh, schedule this month, but I will, I will. I'm going to take it with me on my my next trip, and I'll yeah. be reading it. Yeah. Reading it, John. Where can people find you? Go to mortaladhesions.com. One word, and go to the contact page, and my personal email address is there, and I I will answer you. <laughs> so well, feel free to do mortaladhesions.com. You can also go to Amazon through that too. Right. Thank you, John, for being our our guest in in Hawaii. You know, we we say aloha, which means to give breath, and God gave us breath. You know, when He breathed into Adam and Eve, and when He said to His disciples, "My peace I give you, my peace I leave with you," and He breathed His Spirit on them. So I'll say, we'll close by saying this: May the breath of the Holy Spirit, aloha you, aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.